Hi, pleasant good night, and I am your host, Dr. Woodley, and welcome to our next edition of HealthWise by the St. Kitts Nevis Medical and Dental Association. On behalf of the association, I would like to wish everyone a happy, happy new year, as this is our first edition for 2023. As usual, we use this platform to continuously educate you, our people, within our federation, regionally, and we have now hit internationally. We believe through education, you can make the most informed decision about your health, especially as it relates to preventative measures. And God forbid, if you are sick, we want to give you that tool of knowledge to understand the disease process and actually be a part of your management or care. We also use this platform to showcase our doctors, our beautiful doctors, and the persons who work in the health system as well, who work nonstop, tirelessly, 365 days of the year, keep their phones on at church, on vacation, while sleeping. We bring them to you, the public, so you can interact with us by calling in, you can remove that fear that is so often associated with the doctor and patient relationship. Tonight, we are going to be discussing a very important topic, urgent, blood needed at JNF. This is something we see so often in the social media. And honestly, we at the institution, we get the short end of the stick because we don't think the public fully understands the process that we have to go through in order to acquire blood to give to someone at the hospital. Hence, we are here tonight to dialogue, to clear up myths, to help you understand what it is to give blood. Tonight, discussing this very important topic with me is to my left, Dr. Morton, to his immediate left, Mr. Ibel, and to my right, the beautiful, okay, that's Mr. Ibel, and to my right, the beautiful Nalisa Sunot, who works in the lab. Before we get into this discussion, we're gonna have a short clip so as to whet your appetite as to the do blood donation process at the hospital. All right, so these are the single-use uh, blood bags. And there are two bags per pack. Mm. Yeah? Okay. So it's one bag per person? Yes. So before I start bleeding the donor, this is a blood bag. We pull on the necessary data, the blood group and information put in the collection, the blood group, a unique number identifying this blood donation, the date of collection, and the date of expiration. What is that liquid? So this liquid is an anticoagulant. It is a CPDA. It's a citrus phosphate dextrose solution that um, preserves the blood for a lifespan of 35 days. So Mr. Cyril's pre preference hand today is his right hand for blood donation. So I've already asked him in the chair, because you see he's already comfortable. He's just waiting on me to go, go, go. All right. Okay, so this is his, this, this piece of equipment here is a blood mixer. It actually keep mixing the anticoagulant with the blood that has been bled from the donor making it a homogeneous solution, so the ensuring no blood clots is being formed during the bleeding process. 
<laughs> right. And the squeezing, um, the squeezing is like mm -hmm. the encourage the fast flow of the blood. Oh. Yeah. to record this part. It's a steel needle, as you see, I need to twist the cap, work it. It's not a used needle. Mm -mm. No, this is a bad example, Mr. Mrs. You say you had fluids to drink before? Jamari, just come with me. Come, come. Give me a piece of tape from the um, thing. It's always a knot in it, no? Here? Yeah. Yeah, you'll see the process. Oh, I need a bigger piece than this. <laughs> Numbers are we need to go up to 450. So some of the post post donation care is that after donation we advise that you keep yourself hydrated, a lot of fluid, water, jelly water, fruit juices, eat a healthy meal, iron rich food, especially like your red meats, your green leafy vegetables, fish, poultry, maybe cereals, take your iron supplements, your multivitamins. Try to stay off of anything strenuous for the rest of 24 hours, next 24 hours. No gymming, no heavy exercise. Try not to use your hand to lift heavy stuff. You will feel a kind of a, a little pain in your arm afterwards. If there are any bruising, we ask you to put a cold compact on that. And you'll be good as you know. Within the next 24 hours, the amount of volume of blood you're donating will be replaced. Yeah, just keep hydrating yourself. The key is hydrating so that you can replace whatever is being taken out there. So tell your wife not for 24 hours. Uh, we also say that no alcohol, no drinking, abstain from alcohol for the next 24 hours. Why we say no alcohol is because alcohol tends to dehydrate your body and yet it delay your process of um, recovering. At the end of the donation process, we have a choice of Vitamol, Giant Malt, Water, and a Juice Pack. Um, why we give something sweet? Some, some blood donation um, centers give you like a snack, maybe cookies or biscuit. The idea is the sugar, so that the sugar is going to energize you after the donation. Um, you, we will, you'll be asked to remain lying to three to five minutes. And we could observe him to ensure that he's okay. Before he leaves, we're going to ensure he's not having any head swings or those kind of things. Yeah. Mm 
Guinness. They said Guinness is used to build blood, but I guess it's because they have any alcohol. I really don't know the contents of Guinness, but a lot of people saying that. I will look that one up and get back to you. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people. Maybe the malt in the Guinness. The Guinness makes the malt. I don't know. I feel like the malt in if Guinness it has, same, if Guinness has alcohol. Okay. Guinness well, if there is malt, yes, it will with the blood. Yes. Guinness, yeah, you're gonna tie it out your hand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As I say, blood donation, they, it's, it's, a safe, it's a safe process, it's sterile. There, there isn't any way he would be getting or contracting any infectious disease from this. As you see, everything is sterile, even down to the cup when you break. It's nothing here is reused. Everything is dumped afterwards. We keep the blood, we take the sample for the, for the serological testing, but everything else is discarded. We do not reuse. Um, the only thing, like the chair, we would spray it with 70 percent alcohol and swab it down before the next donors come in, yeah. Yes, it's going. How are you feeling now? You're a seasoned donor, so. <laughs> Most first time donors, um, you tend to get lightheadedness because of the sudden amount of blood being removed, the blood pressure drops, so you will feel a kind of dizziness. So you just recline and we give you like smelling salts or um, what's the one, alkylate, you know, something to revive you a bit. And so, How much so time is it bad? Just one bag a day? No, every three months you can do it. <laughs> Every three Only months, one, like yeah, just one, just, just one, one, just one, yes. Oh, okay. um, because here, um, the we do not make um, blood components here, so the only thing we do is either whole blood or plasma. We don't do platelets and cryoprecipitate. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But um, I think Dr. Drew is bringing it on board. Yeah. yeah. They yes, awesome. they're bringing it on board. So. Yes, yeah, so separate the different components in the blood. So you no, know, normally when you see the blood settle, it had the red and the, the clear part of it, the yellow part. Yes. So out of that, we can extract platelets for people who have bleeding problems, cancer patients. It's specific for them. And those have shell life. Um, it can vary. Um, the fresh frozen parts of it, it lasts for a year. The, the yellow part of it, when you extract it, it can last for a year. What's that yellow part? We call it the plasma. Yeah, they have all the nutrients that go around your body to supply the different organs and so. Mm hmm it's going. Right, so just let me, let me get this way, yeah. Okay, so thank you for looking at that video. And I must say, I am a doctor. And actually, that is the first time I have seen the process through its entirety. And I know those of you who are looking on, you too may be a little bit surprised, but people live when people give. And that video was just showing that. So I'm going to have my movie star to introduce himself, followed by Dr. Morton and by Nalisa. So to my far left, I have Mr. Eibel who was the person you saw in the chair donating blood. Mr. Ibel, thank you for being here with us tonight and please to introduce yourself. Yes, thanks so much for inviting me. Uh, I am Ibel, as, doctor, as the doctor said, and I'm happy to be here to share my experience with you, the listening and viewing audience as per the um, process of giving blood and uh, donating. To my left. Yes, good evening. I'm Dr. Jensen Morton. I am the Director of Health Institutions. So essentially, I'm the person that oversees all of the processes um, at JNF Hospital. And um, the blood drive that's currently occurring in the hospital, we're trying to see how we can make it an effort that is starting off year round and then make it continuous um, basically all the time and just get people back into the habit and culture of continuously donating blood because the emergencies will always happen so I'm glad to be here. 
Okay, and I have to my right, Ms. Nalisa Sunar, who you saw in the video, who was explaining the process, and we want to thank her so much for doing that, because it was basically an impromptu um, interview yesterday that it took place. So Nalisa, please introduce yourself to our listening and viewing audience. Good night all. It's a pleasure to be here with Dr. Woodley and others tonight on the program. I am Ms. Nalisa Sunat and I am a medical technologist attached to the pathology lab GNF General Hospital. Okay, so we're going to get right into it. And Dr. Morton, as you can see, that slide, that is up. It came out on the 16th of January, 2023. Yes. Because what we are trying to do here is have a dialogue. We don't want to be misunderstood anymore. Yes. And many times we see urgent blood needed at JNF. We hear all the negative talks. We hear all the naysayers. And I just think we need to dialogue so all of us mm -hmm. are on the same page. So can you explain to us the new functions and the new operations at the JNF lab to our listening and viewing audience? All right. Well, with regards to the blood bank of the hospital, Originally, the opening hours actually were 8 to 4, Monday to Friday. Um, it was shortened to 8 to 1 um, a few years ago for a few reasons. Um, one of the reasons, um, it revolved around the optimal time in which the most, the bulk of the people were coming in anyway, coupled with the fact that um, there are other processes apart from the active blood donation that have to be done to prepare the blood samples, and the rest of the time was being used for that. But what was occurring was that more and more persons, um, when they were answering the call to donate blood, it was occurring in the afternoons and they were complaining on a regular basis that you know they came to donate, but um, it was after one and everything was closed. So we just decided to make the decision to extend the hours back to its original hours of eight to four. But apart from that, um, now and again, a situation could arise, we're going to get into how we're going to prevent that, but now and again a situation could arise in which in the hospital at that point in time we might not have the availability of that specific blood group. And it's just to say that if there is someone out there that has that available blood group and it is an emergency in the hospital that this person needs this blood group and it cannot wait until the following morning, etc. We want people to know that we are prepared to at least um, take the blood sample from the person to start the process for that person to get that blood um, delivered to them as soon as possible rather than um, waiting um, until the next day if it is an actual emergency that 100% cannot wait. Um, sometimes, sometimes there is a bit of a miscommunication and in cases in which it looks kind of bad but technically it could actually, it could actually wait. Um, sometimes persons have been asked to come back and they did not get the, the pleasure or they did not get the explanation full, full, full to them. Um, so we just decided that to end the um, complaints and to end the gray areas if it is an absolute emergency. And like I said, everything lines up. It's an emergency. We happen to not have the blood product. It's absolutely needed. There is a matching donor that is available and that person presents themselves and it's outside of the normal eight to four hours that that person won't be rejected. Now, even though we're going to have that mechanism in place um, to prevent that scenario from happening, that is why we are having this blood drive um, and this initiative to continuously have blood donations. Because once we continuously have enough people in the general public donating blood, the likelihood that we are out of a particular blood group that would be needed is drastically reduced. So once we have that set up, then that emergency setting, it should not happen and everyone should be able to get the blood products that they need in a timely manner. Okay, so that is well understood, and I'm hoping that the public, if you are looking and listening, that we want you to join this conversation as well. So a little later, about 9, 9.15, we're going to open the lines, and we would like you to call in with your experience, whether it was good or bad, 
because as Dr. Morton has said, we are here to clarify things. You know, this is a time for us now to build our nation. If you look at my first slide, it says do for nation, which is donation. So we are here to share, we are here to help each other. So that is the slide that I love the most. I think that is the most important slide for the night. Urgent, blood needed at JNF. Do for nation, donation. So we are encouraging people here to give. And on that backdrop, Mr. Eibel, what was the reason or what are the reasons that you have decided to become a blood donor? Well, I am not sure if they were the first time I gave blood was for someone and uh, I found out that I was this particular blood type that could give blood to a few persons, <laughs> to anybody. To anybody, to that's and, great. Uh, <laughs> tell, tell them and you know, I just decided and since, which blood which blood type? Since, since I'm a superstar in the uh, o negative blood type. I just <laughs> figured, you know, <laughs> I will continue donating. So it, it was, it was quite simple uh, of a decision to say, you know what, I got this thing. Um, people need it, and every three months I just used to go up and 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 give blood, and you know. So yes. nobody enticed you, nobody gave you money, nobody gave you food, nobody said to you, okay, if you go, you're gonna get this, you're gonna get that. So it was just something that came from the heart. You realize you are O negative and that you can give to um, anybody. And you just decided you wanted to become a blood donor. So you were not forced, you were not coerced, because the point I'm getting at here, it is voluntary. We are not here to force anyone to donate blood. It is a voluntary effort. And it's actually a great humanitarian effort, if you ask me. So I really want to thank Mr. Eibel for actually donating every three months. Um, he's actually saving at least, each time he donates, he's actually saving at least three persons' lives. So we're going to come back to Mr. Eibel, but I'm going to go to Nalisa, and we're going to have a few terms clarified. And we will be looking at slide number, give me slide number um, three. And Nalisa, I just wanted to explain these terms for the viewing audience. So that, you know, we need to understand and we need to actually speak the jargon too. So we can all be on the same page. So as the terminology is showing up on your screens for the viewers, um, the blood transfusion purpose or the, the process is actually the recipient, the, the patient in the hospital re receiving the unit of blood that is already screened. A blood donor is a person who can who gives blood willingly, voluntarily for the purpose of transfusion. And here we having the recipient is also the person who receives blood. There is another um, key term that we can look at and we can term it blood donation. It's actually the voluntary procedure of the donor having the blood drawn from him or her and used for transfusion purposes. And while we're on this, because sometimes when persons hear blood, about blood donation, we are just thinking the red blood. But I know that there are other components that persons can donate. Can you give us a little um, insight as to that? Yes, so um, blood donation um, is of four types. Uh, you can have whole blood donation, you could have plasma donation, platelet donation, or you could have um, red cell donation. At the JNF hospital, we actually just do the whole blood donation, where the whole blood donation, yes, where the um, whole blood is separated into packed cells and fresh frozen plasma. The latter one, platelets donation, is not currently done at the JNF. Um, I'm going to assume shortly it's going to be coming on board. Dr. Morton. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be coming on board and that's it. Okay. So yeah, if you look at slide number eight, um, Khalid, 
we are seeing the different types of blood and blood components. Because ever so often persons just think we are just giving red blood cells or we are giving whole blood as you would have explained. But you can get other components like the platelets, like the plasma. So it just depends on what the patient needs, then we take that particular part of the blood. So while you're there, Nalisa, um, look at slide five, Khalid. The term, what is in your blood? Because we need to understand that. What is in your blood? Mm -hmm. So, Nalisa? So, the blood is made of um, plasma, which is composed of 55%. You have the buffy coat, which is 1%, and the red blood cell, which is 45%. The plasma, which is mostly water, it constitutes of water, minerals, salts, proteins, um, vitamins, hormones. Its main function is um, blood clotting, fighting infections, and transporting of substance to the blood cell and maintain of body temperature. The buffy coat, which is made up of white blood cell and platelets, the white blood cell uh, helps in fighting against disease, immunity. Uh, platelets, on the other hand, uh, function is to form blood clots and stop active bleeding. The red blood cell, which is one of the most important part, function is for the transport of oxygen from the lungs to the cell and returning of carbon dioxide from cell to the lungs to be exhaled. Okay. So while we were looking at the video with uh, Mr. Ibel, um, it was actually, um, yeah, it was eye-opening when I saw the bag um, falling up. Mr. Eibel, at one point in time, I thought you actually passed out because I saw your head twisted <laughs> to the side. But you were actually looking at it, and I must say you are, you are indeed very, very brave. So, um, Mr. Eibel, how were you feeling during the process? Because we want the public to understand that it is safe, secure, and easy to donate blood. It's an easy process, and you did that. You were, you were a pro. I mean, I do applaud you for doing blood such. So how were you feeling during the process of giving blood? It's a safe Not totally. process. I was just it's waiting for my vitamin to go. <laughs> 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 no, it, it, was, it was a relaxed environment. I mean, every time I go there, uh -huh. you know, it's, they just make you feel comfortable to, you know, um, extract the blood. Um, because there is really no, no pain. There is no... There's nothing to really fear. I mean, the process is, is really, really quite simple. Um, the hardest thing is the little sting that you get from the needle. I mean, that's, it, it matter who doctor would jug you, as we, as we say, mm -hmm. you must feel a sting. Mm -hmm. You know, and after that, after that, it's just straightforward. The blood just keeps coming out. Okay. And you squeeze that thing now and again just to help the process go a little fa faster. But mm -hmm. it really is simple. And, and I hope that by having this show, uh, we could have people donating more. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, you don't know which one of your family is going to get your blood. Exactly. You know? I mean, I'm happy to give my blood to whoever because I don't know when I am going to need my own blood too. If I could get my own blood, I don't even know that. Mm -hmm. You know? So it's just, it's easy. So I think everybody should try and participate. I, I really love that sharing spirit that Mr. Abel has just, you know, put out here in the atmosphere. Um, Dr. Morton, you were saying something? Um, since Mr. Abel just mentioned for a brief moment um, the Vitamalt part, I just wanted to just um, give a little shout out to the brewery who's just across the road from the <laughs> hospital. They've been donating a case of Vitamalt every week for years. Oh, wow. Just, just yeah. for the effort. So we always have Vitamalt. Sometimes um, we would still have, and they would just have it there, and the problem would just be for somebody to come to collect it. So I just wanted to give them um, the little shout out. <laughs> okay, so Nalisa, um, how much blood is taken at any one point in time? So the the um, capacity of the blood bag is actually 500 um, milliliters. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, it could be 450 plus or minus 50. Okay, so at least 500. And on your screen, you would see that that 500 is a pint. Well, we don't speak like that, really. <laughs> and then, or it can be about a half liter. 
uh, it can be 500 cc's or milliliters. Mm -hmm. And if, Khalid, if you come back to us, we have um, the bag here, which we are mm -hmm. showing. So this would be the bag for the blood, the whole blood. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. and I realize I have another bag here, and this looks like platelets. Plates so the platelets is actually less, right? Those are the platelets. It's about, I'm seeing 300 cc's. Mm -hmm. And the whole blood here, this would be the 500. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we take this amount of blood when we are doing the whole blood from the patient. Yeah. So that's what Mr. Ibra gave during that presentation. Okay. So now we're going to go into who can donate blood. Because that is normally a really big question. And sometimes when we ask people to donate, the first thing they said to us, I can't donate blood. And remember, the spirit of sharing, that's what we want to generate here tonight. The spirit of giving, giving to save a life. I know other persons have, you know, different views as it relates to giving blood and donating blood. But for those of us who need the blood to survive, we want to know who can donate blood. So if we look at slide nine, Khalid, we're going to see who can donate blood. And Dr. Morton, you can go through this very quickly. Okay, well, mm -hmm. the persons that can donate blood, quite a few people can. Um, it's anyone that has a normal blood pressure, a normal hemoglobin levels. Now, what we consider to be a normal blood pressure would be anything close to the two numbers that you see, 120, the first one, 80, the second one, which corresponds to your heart basically squeezing and relaxing the pressure. That's because with the donation of blood, it could cause a slight decrease um, in the overall blood pressure from the blood loss. So it's to make sure that the person isn't starting off with any issue um, where that is concerned. The hemoglobin levels, that's just basically an it's a measure of basically the overall blood count. So if your hemoglobin level is low, then it does not make any sense we take a blood sample from you because it's going to make the hemoglobin level fall even lower. So we need persons that are basically nice and healthy with regards to their blood pressure and their hemoglobin. Um, any person between the ages of 18 and 62, that's who we um, take donations from here in St. Kitts. Um, if you are older than 62 and if you're deemed to be healthy in some emergent circumstances, we could consider um, accepting the blood um, donation from you. We can't go below 18 though because the person has to give consent for themselves since it's a voluntary process. Um, the person has to weigh more than 45 kilograms, which is just about just over 100 pounds. 110. 110 pounds, excuse me. That's because um, when persons, basically the larger you are, the more blood volume you're going to overall have. And persons that are a little bit smaller, it means that they're a little bit more vulnerable to the decreased um, blood volume from the blood donation. So we tend to go for persons that have a little bit more weight on them. Um, anyone who does not have any infections such as HIV, hepatitis B or C or tuberculosis, simply because those are illnesses that are viral illnesses that are, um, well, viral and bacterial for tuberculosis that are present in the bloodstream. Um, we do not wish to give anyone any ailment from receiving um, a blood donation because it can't be that you came to get help and we end up giving you um, another problem. The wonderful thing is that even though um, we don't accept blood from persons that have these known illnesses, we do a very rigorous screening process of the blood, um, which is always um, internationally checked, calibrated on a regular basis to ensure no errors ever occur. And if someone that is infected with one of these things donates, the blood will be rejected because the machine is very sensitive, it will pick it up. Um, and of course, um, you can't be on certain medications and give blood. Some medications that can cause blood thinning and some other things, we cannot accept blood from those people because the blood sample, it just wouldn't be as beneficial as it could be if the person was not on that medication. There are a few other things, but so there's a list of medication. That is slide 12. Um, that is slide 12, Khalid. There's a list of medication. And you can just look at it quickly where we can see things like Plavix. You mm -hmm. have to wait for a while, like 14 days before you can give. Persons on Pradaxel, you have to wait at least two days. You cannot take it within two days of giving. Persons who are on um, hair loss remedies, you have to be careful, persons who are taking stuff for acne treatment. There's at least one month you have to wait before you can give any blood. Let me get slide 13. 
um, persons who are on um, PROSCA, which are prostate um, for prostate symptoms, you have to wait at least six months. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you cannot give blood within six months if you are taking um, these medication. Persons are taking stuff for psoriasis. You have to wait. Look at that time. Almost. Oh, they're saying no. Once never. you take it, once you can. Once you're taking once medication you take. for psoriasis, you can. This tegison, you cannot, cannot give ever again. Ever <laughs> again. And what is very interesting, if you're on insulin, because that normally comes up. Mm -hmm. If I'm a diabetic, can I give blood? If you are diabetic on insulin, which is type one diabetes, or if you are if you are type two on insulin, then you are unable to give blood. But if your diabetes is controlled by diet and medication or tablets, then once you are controlled, then you can give blood. Mm. So, Mr. Ibel, I see you itching to get back in. So let us hear from <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> because, you know, I didn't realize that until yesterday when Nalisa was explaining it that you're not only giving blood to save someone's life, but the other components within the blood, you're saving lives by giving someone some plasma, that's what you call it, plasma, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, what's the other one? Platelets. Platelets. So mm -hmm. you mean you could extract those from the blood yes. and give someone specifically just the platelets yes. if they need and just the plasma if they need. Yes. yes. Especially if they got like um, a gunshot wound, a lot of blood loss, the plasma helps to right. um, yes, return well, the blood volume That is faster. another reason why we should uh, we should give blood for those for those reasons. And that is why we're going to look at our fact sheet. Continue, Mr. Ivan. And, mm -hmm. and, and before we go any further, I want to invite the hospital and the lab to my school, oh. which is Cradles Learning Center. Uh, we take children from zero to five years old. That's a little plug there. <laughs> <laughs> right? we, uh, to set up and let's do a screening process where we, we could ask our parents and our people in the community to give blood. So I want to okay. give you an mm -hmm. opportunity to do that. We have done something similar with the University of um, over at Keon, Windsor. Mm -hmm. Windsor, and uh, they, it was quite successful, so I'm giving you that opportunity here tonight. Okay, well, thank you, Mr. Ayabu. You're really let, letting it on thick tonight. Mm -hmm. And that is a very, you know, lovely gesture that you have um, offered to us, the Ministry of Health, um, by extension, JNF. And we are also throwing this out there to other um, business places. You know, we can do blood drives. You can also encourage your employees to become blood donors, um, to, you know, enroll on our list that we are currently putting together. So in the event that someone needs blood, we don't have to put it on social media and get that person's name dragged through social media mm -hmm. and let people know what sickness or sicknesses you know, they are experiencing. So we are here having these dialogues just for that main reason. Let us get into the habit of sharing. Let us get into the habit of talking. Let us get into the habit of helping. So if you look at our fact, sheet that's um slide number four Khaled. and mr ivory said something very interesting that he just had a aha moment when he realized when he gave his whole blood he did not realize it could have been you know split up into three components and that is why the fourth fact says 450 cc's of blood can save as many as three lives because you can give at least three persons, whether the red blood cells, the platelets, or the plasma, and you can save lives. Okay, um, another fact sheet is that each person has at least between five and six liters of blood. A person can donate blood every 90 days. And Mr. Ayrbo would have spoken about that because he says he gives blood every three months. So do you go religiously every three months, Mr. Ayrbo? Religiously. Mm -hmm. And, and, and when called. Just, <laughs> just for the record, I have gotten turned back. So it's not like every time you go, oh you, you will be able to give blood. Mm -hmm. So when they test the bl my blood and they see that, uh, I think was the blood count was below... 14. 40 uh, or 14. Probably 14. 40 or uh, something. 14. Something. They said, well, no, Mr. Ibel, you cannot give blood this time around. You'll have to <laughs> take some Between. iron mm -hmm. tablets or something and then come back. So 
you know, it's not every time you go to give blood you will be able to because maybe at that time you were doing something that just depleted your, mm -hmm. you know, your your the iron in your body. So I just want to chat about. Mm -hmm. Also, uh -huh. Doc, uh -huh. I realized that um, one of the things I realized when I was giving blood is that they will be able to tell whether you're sick or not mm -hmm. because they test your blood to see mm -hmm. if you have any disease. Mm -hmm. so, so that is that is another plus That's plus there for persons giving blood. I mean, there's a whole plethora of tests that they do before mm -hmm. the blood actually is given to someone, mm -hmm. and so that's a plus there for you, the the, uh, the person that's giving blood. So again, I encourage you to do that. Now, Lisa, I think we need to employ Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Mr. Mr. Idol, Idol. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. at the blood, a blood bank. donor <laughs> recruiter. Yeah. <laughs> or at the master donor recruiter because yeah. he's very knowledgeable. And yep. he said something very important. Um, but each time that you go, you will be able to get blood. Because I can recall about two or three weeks ago, we were looking blood for our own negative patient. And I want to call those two patients of mine. But well, one was a patient. Me. And you didn't tell me? But I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I want to call those a patient of mine who just readily, she didn't give me permission to call her name, so I wouldn't. And when I called her and I said that, you know, I know you're all negative and I need it urgently, she just jumped at it. She said, Sure, Dr. Woodley. She said, um, I haven't eaten as yet. <clears throat> So let me eat, and then if you need me, I will go straight. And she went immediately after eating. So I really want to kudos. And sometimes when you lose faith in humanity, these are the things that make you realize that we have good people out there, mm. and we can't give up on life. And she not only went and donated, she told me, I know somebody else who's O negative. And she gave me where that person worked, and I got in touch with that person, and he too just jumped at it and I was like, my God, lightning struck <laughs> twice within like one hour. And that person went to the blood bank to give blood. And as Mr. Eibel said, he just wanted to give. He didn't even remember he had given within the last eight weeks. So as Mr. Eibel said, when he went and they interrogated him, they realized he had just given like about seven, eight weeks ago. So unfortunately, he could not give. So. It goes to show that when you go there, it's a safe process. We're not just taking you and taking blood from you. We are not vampires. You know, we're actually screening. We're actually doing a mini exam on you. And it's a plus for you because, as Mr. Ivel said, you get to know if you're sick. You get a mini examination to know what's your blood pressure, your pulse, your HB, etc. So we're going to go into who can't give blood, Nalisa, uh, Miss Sunat. Before you go there, that I'm yes. right? <laughs> Mr. Ibel is on a wall. I gave, no, I gave blood um, willingly, of course, because somebody called me and said that they needed blood. And when I reached back to my school, a uh, food basket was there for me. Oh, wow. Oh. And I'm like, who sent this? I mean, my wife is right there. I'm, he's just a, a side chick or something sent something to me. You know? And so I was so surprised that the person sent, um, you know, a food basket. So, okay. I mean, that was so nice. Oh, that's great. But that's Mr. Ibro, you're really enjoying this, you know. <laughs> I realize you're really, really no, but, into it. But, but I'm so happy. Tell the people, I am happy. We have to tell the people. We have to tell people. They need it's to give safe. blood. Yes. And it is safe. It is safe. It is easy. Secure. It is not painful. Mm. I mean, you know, so we need to just get the word out. We need to get the word out. So, so I'm Mr. glad to be here. Who can't give blood? Let us go into that. So that's slide 10, um, Khalid. Oh. Yeah, Khalid. <laughs> okay, so, okay, oh. he has it. Great. <laughs> so, there is a number of reasons why a person can give blood, cannot give blood, and some of them can be, as Dr. Woodley just said, if you had given blood before or within the last 12 weeks, if you're having like a chesty cold, a sore throat, active cold sores, if you're currently taking uh, medication that is not allowed to be taken during um, donation, if you have recent um, tattoo, body piercing, um, accidental needle sticks, if you're suffering from epilepsy. Again, diabetes is here, those who, is on, those who are on insulin. Uh, if you ref receive a blood transfusion, if you're having infectious markers, such as HIV, Hep B, Hep C. You've recently traveled to um, a malaria endemic country. 
Chagas, um, Chagas disease, if you're uh, pregnant, breastfeeding, if you're underweight, mm -hmm. uh, if you had a recent abortion, if you're on um, cancer treatment, chemotherapy, radioact radioactive therapy, uh, heart attack, recent cardiac surgeries, if you have blood clotting disorders, or you're taking certain types of vaccines for different reasons, different vaccines have different deferral uh, time. So those are just some of the reasons. There, there are a few more. There could be a lot more, but those are some that we're going to try to zoom in on for this purpose. However, do not get um, you know discouraged. Although you have seen so many um, can't, actually most of us in the population can donate. Mm. So these are just you know it looks a lot, but actually you can be a donor. So just go through your history um, and let us know what you have or don't have. So at this juncture, we're going to take a break and we're going to come right back. And we are also going to open the lines and there you can see the numbers at the bottom of the screen. We want you to dialogue with us. Let us try and clear up any myths, any misunderstandings that we may have. So see you in a bit. Join us for Youth Lounge with Skaniper, a talk show on vital topics like tourism, entrepreneurship, education, religion, sex education, and mental health. Featuring experts from St. Kitts, Nevis, and the Caribbean region. Tune in live on ZIZ on the last Monday of each month, starting January 30th at 8.30 p.m. What did you mean earlier about climate change, Mom? Well, when I was your age, I remember beautiful coral reefs and healthy beaches. The summers weren't as hot as they are right now, and the rainy season meant that it only rained when it was supposed to. And then what happened? The weather just started to change, and the storms got worse, coral reefs started to die because the ocean was getting too warm, and crops started to die because there was not much rain. You know, we realized as adults that we were doing something that was causing this. What were you all doing? Same thing we're doing now. Not using clean, renewable energy, chopping down too many trees, and even polluting the air with gases, such as the gases emitted from our cars when we drive around. We need to help before it's too late, Mom. We can't let it get worse. What can I do? We can raise our voices. With 35 million dreams, aspirations, and futures at risk in Cari Forum, we need your voice in our story against climate change. Acknowledge. Commit. Act. This message is brought to you by the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center under the Intra-ACP Global Climate Change Alliance Plus program and is funded by the European Union. Hi, and welcome back to HealthWise by the St. Kitts Nevis Medical and Dental Association. If you have just joined in, man, you have missed a lot. But we are doing urgent blood needed at JNF. Do for nation. And I am here with our superstar donor, Mr. Cyril Ibel. I'm here with Dr. Morton, who is the director of health institutions. And I'm here with Ms. Nalisa Sunoff who is a technician in the lab at JNF Hospital. So, so far we have looked at many things, who are blood donors, um, the process, we had a beautiful um, video of Mr. Eibel and Ms. Sunat um, explaining the procedure of donating blood. It is a safe and secure and easy process. Now we are going to go to our streets in St. Gates and we're going to listen to the public and we're going to get some of their views as it relates to blood donation, being a blood donor, or just basically what they know about donating blood. So Khalid, we can have those videos, please. My name is Esther Philip. Uh, do you know your blood group? Yeah, my blood group is O. Okay. Uh, do you know who you can give blood to? I could give blood to many people. 
what caused it to give blood? Because the doctor sent me to get blood. Yeah, Rastaman vibration is positive and my glow group is all positive. All positive. Z I Z news. Have you ever given blood? I think I remember sometime in the distant past, but I can't remember the details, tell the truth. Okay. Do you know who can give blood to? As far as I understand, O positive is a universal donor, so I think that I should be able to give to almost anybody unless there's some other debilitating circumstance. Okay, so um, Khaled, it's a pity that we didn't hear exactly what our, um, what, what the public was saying as it relates to blood donation. But I'm sure persons as, okay, yes, I just saw that persons at home, they were able to um, listen to what the persons had to say. Now, we want to underscore something here, and Khaled, let's get slide 15, please. Um, the procedure for voluntary blood donation at the hospital, Dr. Morton spoke about the services being open from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And in emergencies, no one will be turned back. Um, I don't know if the video that we did earlier, if it captured everything, but you can make an appointment, and that is slide 15, Khalid. You can make an appointment at the blood bank at JNF Hospital. You can call the number 465-2551, extension 149, slide 15. Mm -hmm. You have to bring your donor card, your driver's license, <coughs> or any other form of identification. As you see, you will get a mini physical examination, and that is for free. You also have a questionnaire that may be administered for you to fill out so that we can get your past medical history. Then, as you saw with Mr. Eibel, you get your blood collection. And this is the part Mr. Eibel loves a lot, the refreshment area. Refreshment will be given at the end of the process. So, Dr. Morton, what if I come to get blood and I can't? Do I get the refreshment still? <laughs> <laughs> we, have a, we have a limited supply. We have a limited the, the, supply. The refreshment is to boost back your glucose and the, um, your fluids and a little vitamin B from the vitamin too. So you don't get the malt for your effort for showing up? Not at this moment. Not at this moment. Okay. So, Nalissa, speak to me about some side effects of donating blood. Because we're speaking about the positive sides. But we have to be honest. To every situation, every scenario, there's a negative side to every scenario. So, what are some of the side effects of donating blood that you have to explain to your patients after they would have donated blood? Okay. Some of these could include um, bruising, which commonly occur at the site of... Um, collection it could have like a color change not to be deterred from it it could um, have color change from like a yellow to a blue purple ish color um, all you need to do is apply a cold compact if you should have that um, sometimes after donation um, you would tend to have a uh, a faint feeling, dizziness, nausea, nausea kind of feeling. Um, that is because of the amount of blood you had donated. The blood pressure might have dropped a little bit, but that is easily solved by hydrating yourself. And yes, yes, the malt with the sugar in it, it, it can give you back a bit of energy. Um, yes, you will feel a pain, a pinch kind of pain when the needle is inserted, as Mr. Eibel said. It's just a pain. At the site, the pinch and the actual process of drawing the blood, it's painless. Um, sometimes some people would say they have physical weakness in the arm. That is why after donation, we would advise the donor to um, abstain for maybe 5 hours, 24 hours from heavy physical activity or lifting, lifting with that arm. If the site continues to bleed, if after applying pressure a minute or two, you're advised to elevate the arm over heart level for three to five minutes and it should stop. If it doesn't stop, well, then we, we need to consult further with your uh, physician or someone at the a &E department. And that's basically some of the, most of what we would get coming out of donors. So if you look at slide 18, Khalid, where you have some do's and don'ts after donating and as Nalisa Miss Sonat mm -hmm. just said you have to hydrate 
drink plenty of water. Mm -hmm. um, important, call us if you feel sick. Yes. Sit down if you feel dizzy. Mr. Abel, did you experience any of this after? Absolutely none of them. Never. <laughs> Mr. Abel is the prototype. Except, for except, except for the little pinch from the needle. For the little I've pinch from the needle. Okay, yeah. rest and replenish iron. So okay. you have to eat foods rich in iron and mm -hmm. take your vitamin C because vitamin C helps the absorption of the iron. Don't. No alcohol. Mr. Ivel, you did any alcohol in the 24 hours after? No. Okay. I, I don't drink. You don't drink. Great. No. So yes. you can give blood any time. <laughs> <laughs> and look at this one. Do not perform heavy lifting of vigorous exercise for 24 hours. So I know you might feel like a hero after you would have donated mm -hmm. and you might want to go back to the gym and boast off and mm -hmm. do all kind of weights and squats you're not supposed to. Okay, so let us have the numbers um, Khaled, at the bottom of the screen. And we would really like you, the viewing audience, the listening audience to call in. Let us hear what's on your mind. Let us know if we are actually getting through to you. And the numbers are there. Um, it is 869-662-8674. We have 869-767-4765. And we have our overseas line, which is 1239-645-4500. Now, while we wait for our callers, um, Nelissa, the thing about tattoo. That's one of mm -hmm. the biggest things. Oh, I just got a tattoo, so I cannot give. What is, you know, the story, or is it a myth? What is um, it behind that? Uh, okay, so um, having a tattoo, even though it's uncommon, unclean tattoo needles would tend to carry a number of blood-borne viruses, so that would increase the donor risk of unknowingly um, transmit that, um, that virus. So if you recently had a tattoo, it is advised that you abstain from donating blood for 12 months. For 12 months? Yes. Okay, so that's one thing we have cleared up. We have also cleared up about the diabetes. So if you're on insulin, mm -hmm. you cannot give, but once your diabetes is being controlled by diet and tablets, and you are controlled, you can give. Dr. Morton, what about the high blood pressure? As in, if you have high blood yeah, pressure? Yeah, people say, oh, I got pressure, so I can't give any blood. No, if you are hypertensive and it's controlled, um, if you are hypertensive and it's controlled, and it's not with one of the medications that's contraindicated with regards to blood donation, then it's actually okay for you to give, um, for you to donate blood. So it is safe. So if it you're, is safe. It is safe. So once you are hypertensive, mm -hmm. it is controlled. And with a drug that is not, not contraindicated, contra indicated, mm -hmm. you can give mm -hmm. um, blood. So, Mr. Ibo, did you have any problems, any contraindication? Well, obviously not, because you are giving blood yeah, all any, the time. Any what? Any problems in terms of anything did not prohibit you, honestly, from giving blood? No, because no, you, no, you no, are no. giving. Only, only when I came and I tested that, they said that. My HB, iron HB was your low. iron was low, so that's what at, at one time. But okay, great. No. So, we are going to look at some myths about blood donation. Oh, we have a caller online. We have a caller. Caller, good night. Hi, good night. Hi, good night. Can you speak up, please, so we can hear you? We want to hear your lovely voice. <laughs> Oh, great. I love the show you guys have. Thank you. I'm learning a lot. Oh, great. Um, one question, though. Um, if I'm coming to donate, do I have to eat um, a balanced breakfast or lunch or dinner if I am coming to donate um, at the lab? Okay. Very good question. Thank you so much for calling in. We do appreciate it. Khalid, let us get slide 14 for our caller. And Nalisa, you can probably go through this slide. That's slide 14, preparing to donate. Mm -hmm. okay. She asked a very good question, what she must do before she goes to donate. Okay, so um, prior to blood donation, yes, um, to the caller, yes, you should 
you should eat your healthy breakfast if it's breakfast or lunch whichever session you're coming to donate blood yes eat food or consume food that are rich in iron you could have food such as your red meat your fish your poultry green leafy vegetables um, beans uh, raisins use your iron supplement multivitamins uh, keep your body hydrate at all times hydrate 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 that's a trick behind it because keeping hydrate it makes the vein more easily visible and the blood will flow easily when it comes to the actual drawing of the blood um, also we can t adequate sleep sometimes do help if you have adequate night prior to donation it helps it keeps the, the motivation going um, another one that um, I am um, actually we haven't been practicing this practice this one i've never actually during my time at gnf i've never actually seen this one making an appointment uh -huh. i am so proud of that to learn tonight myself that we actually have that on board um, that will be so much of a plus if a donor could call and make an appointment because the donor will find a time that is convenient for him or her to come to us because we're having donors that take their lunch hours or maybe their, their lunch break session to come to us. So I am so happy to hear that that appointment, call and make an appointment is on board now. Yes. I have been turned back mm -hmm. when the hospital would call me for my A minus blood. Oh, I mean, yeah, oh, oh, my blood. <laughs> call me enough for this precious blood. And then they tell me to close one o'clock. Oh, I can't give it. So, Mr. Ibo, <laughs> if you would have been listening to Dr. Morton, we're on a new era, yes, a new dispensation. Yes. That's what I'm saying. I'm glad. I'm four. glad. I'm very glad. So, <laughs> that is why we are here. And well, Dr. Morton. If, if, if persons would make appointments, mm -hmm. we, would, we would schedule the appointments between eight right. and one because that's convenient. But. Mm -hmm. If you happen to arrive between 1 and 4, we're not going to reject it because we're still mm -hmm. open. But if the people are making appointments, it would be easier for everyone since we could complete the other processes um, and still get all of that finished in a decent time in the day to be able to distribute. Dr. Woodley, you better give the public a number because, you might not. <laughs> because you see, because when we can go, when we can reach up the, when we reach up there and we still can't get in. No, you need to play, say, no, you need to play this health wise. Dr. Woodley is doing a good job and Dr. <laughs> and Dr. No. Jensen no. ain't doing a good job because, no. No. you know, they say that they could make an appointment and come and look here nobody here and a lot of things. <laughs> no, but actually, no, Dr. <laughs> Morton is doing a very good yeah. job in that area. Um, we are taking baby steps, but we are getting yeah. there. What we have to remember we are trying to correct things that were not in place for many years mm -hmm. and I really have to kudos Dr. Morton and now under the Minister of Health Dr. Terence Drew for making these steps for opening up the blood donation process for making it easier for persons to donate because what we saw happening in the past we were asking people to donate but we were not facilitating that donating mm -hmm. process. Correct, yeah. So I really want to thank Dr. Morton. I mean, I know it's overwhelming. I know we have a lot to do. But as I normally say to my daughter, if you do something every day, you're going to get to your goal. And that is what we are doing. And that is why we are here tonight. Mm -hmm. We're here tonight for that very same reason. To open dialogue, to open communication, to let you know we are on the road of preparing things. That is where we are. So, Carlo, you called. I hope that the answers from Ms. Sunat really helped when you asked about what you do before you go and you donate blood. Um, as here in, the, in the, um, the slide, it says avoid fatty foods, avoid alcohol. Um, another myth, what about persons who smoke? Can they give blood? I mean, I was reading somewhere that you who smoke it doesn't mean that you cannot gay but i think in the first 24 48 hours you should not be smoking i guess that's something ticklish which we would have to yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably yeah. tip to our own yes. but for now yes. we would yes. prefer yes. that yes. you do yes. not smoke yes. mm -hmm. when you are thinking about donating blood yeah. now we are going to go into the myths and tally that is like yeah it's like 20. Mm. so um dr morton blood donation can weaken the immune system no so that's a myth no that is a myth the blood donation process it does not um adversely affect affect your immune system at all okay you know somebody asked me if i get blood from somebody who's intelligent will i become <laughs> intelligent too 
So I went, when I transfer in your hands, and <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was a question. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> All right, um, blood donation is only for heavier people. That one. I'll Mr. Ivan, what do you think about that one? Asterisk. I'll put an asterisk. No, blood donation is for everybody. For, uh, well, you have to be over 110 pounds, but mm. once you pass that threshold, then it's anybody. That's what I said. That's the only little asterisk. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Blood donation is not for people with diabetes, and we have we spoken about that already. Mm -hmm. um, blood donation is not for people with blood pressure issues. We have spoken about that already. And unless it's a low blood pressure. Unless it's, well, it's, it's no. a low blood pressure. Um, blood donation makes you prone to infections, Miss um, Miss Sunat. Is that a myth or that's a myth? There's no truth behind that. There's no truth behind no. that. No. Thank the person. Okay. Um, we have somebody from the Bahamas who just bigging us up, <laughs> and we are so happy for that. Mm -hmm. Which means that what we are doing here is not in vain. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get. I mean, I know Dr. Morton came straight from the hospital <laughs> to here. And you know we are tired people, but we make the time to come here to educate. Miss Tuna is still in her scrubs. Miss Tuna is still in her scrubs, <laughs> honestly. So that person from Bahamas who is bigging us up, we want to thank you so much for listening to us. And I hope you are learning something. And I hope you can actually disseminate some of this information to your Bahamian people mm -hmm. as well. Um, women can't donate blood. Is that a myth or is that truth? It's, it's a myth. Women can donate, but you know, we have to be a little careful with, um, with women of menstruating age just because every month you know, you're going to have some bleeding. Sometimes if it's heavy bleeding due to, um, well, some people just have heavy periods, but other times it could be something else like um, a fibroid issue, etc., and you're losing a lot of blood, then you could be walking around and actually be anemic. Mm -hmm. So it might not be safe for you to donate blood when you yourself might need a bit. But women in general, yes, they can. We tend to target, um, well, what we say, we tend to target young healthy males. That's because they tend to have blood to spare on average. But anybody between the ages of 18 to 65 with the other little asterisks, they can give, women included. What about doctors? Can we give blood? Not, so, not <laughs> supposed to routinely because you do a lot of work with a lot of standing mm -hmm. so s <laughs> you will you that usually no usually so usually if a, doctor, if a doctor gives blood it just means that she cannot do whatever for like what 24 hours well, i like, would i would want some if you if you're on the <laughs> if you're on the job yeah. they tend to say no because your job is to be as alert as possible and to be mm. taking care of people. Well, but yeah, if, if you're, you're on not, job, but if you're on your day well, off, no, normally, you normally, if you're, if you're we don't take blood from doctors because we okay. are expected to be alert, as Doctor mm. Morton said. Mm. We are expected to be working at our, you know, optimal levels all the time. All the time, as I said in my, you know, preamble, we have our phones on all the time in church, at home, sleeping when we're on vacation. So we need our blood so because we need to respond to emergencies. So we cannot be, you know, dizzy and fainty, you know, after blood donation and then they call me for, you know, multiple trauma. I mean, I'll be dizzy. I won't be able to, you know, assist effectively. So normally they leave us alone, but if push comes to shove and we mm -hmm. really, and there's no one else, then I guess they would tap into us. But normally for doctors, we don't. Now, on slide 21, I didn't even know that existed. World Blood Donor Day. Trust me, I don't know everything. I don't know Miss Sonat. I don't know if you knew. You yes, yes, I, I did yes. know. Dr. Morton. So, World Blood Donor Day, 14th oh, June, 14th. of June. Mm -hmm. So, we would be mm -hmm. expecting you and your team at JNF mm -hmm. to be um, putting something together. Well, even prior to that. But we want everybody to save that date and you have enough time to think about it. We are now in February. Mm -hmm. You can think about it and, you know, make it a date, you know, tell a friend and that friend, tell a friend and call the hospital, make an appointment and come and donate blood. This is the month of love, which is February. <laughs> and I think on slide 22, let's see slide 22. Show some love. Give blood this Valentine's month. How does that sound? Okay, <laughs> that's good. We'll use it. <laughs> we'll use it. Okay. So I'm hoping that you know this conversation would. This is we, this is one of you know many conversations we are going to have about um, donating blood, 
I must say I learned a lot from, you know, actually doing my little research because sometimes as a surgeon, you know, I just send them to the lab and say, I need two units. And then we soon <laughs> I was sent to me, Dr. Woodley, we don't have two units. And I'm like, well, why? And we have to think as the blood bank, like any commercial money bank downtown. Those banks can't survive unless we don't, we don't put our money in those banks. The same thing with the blood bank at JNF. It cannot survive if we don't have that continuous supply of persons given. Just like how Republic, National, First Caribbean, they would crumble if we do not put our monies there. The same analogy applies. So on that note, we're going to take a break, and then we're going to come right back and wrap up urgent blood needed at JNF. It's time that we realize that we must work together to thrive. The world as we know it, the sky and below it. Could I never have more wonder? Yeah, with life and all you see and the climate's changing. But hope is remaining. And we can't ignore the future. It depends on you and me. One chance, all that we got. One voice, together we stand. Take care. What did you mean earlier about climate change, Mom? Well, when I was your age, I remember beautiful coral reefs and healthy beaches. The summers weren't as hot as they are right now, and the rainy season meant that it only rained when it was supposed to. And then what happened? The weather just started to change, and storms got worse, coral reefs started to die because the ocean was getting too warm, and crops started to die because there was not much rain. You know, we realized as adults that we were doing something that was causing this. What were you all doing? Same thing we're doing now. Not using clean, renewable energy, chopping down too many trees, and even polluting the air with gases, such as the gases emitted from our cars when we drive around. We need some help before it's too late, Mom. We can't let it get worse. What can I do? We can raise our voices. With 35 million dreams, aspirations, and futures at risk in Cari Forum, we need your voice in our story against climate change. Acknowledge. Commit. Act. This message is brought to you by the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center under the Intra-ACP Global Climate Change Alliance Plus program and is funded by the European Union. Hi, good night, and if you're just joining in, we are basically over with <laughs> our drive. But this is just one of many, so we are going to come back. So don't feel sad, we are going to come back, and we had a great time. And I must say, I want to thank the persons on the live for, you know, you know sharing your night with us. We really appreciate you, and we realize that you are serious about, you know, health, and you are actually pushing that. I also want to thank, I have some friends down there in Anguilla, my banker, Ralph Henry, got a little jealous when I started making the analogy between the blood bank and the commercial bank. I'm sorry, Ralph. <laughs> um, as you can see, we have quite a few persons that are listening, and I really want to, you know, send a warm shout out to you, some big warm hugs and kisses. We really appreciate it because a lot goes into this show. We prepare, we have been preparing for almost two weeks for this show. Um, we were supposed to come to you last night, but because we didn't have the video that you saw at the beginning of the show with Miss Sunat and Ibel, we had to postpone the show. 
So it's a lot of love that comes into HealthWise. It's a lot of planning. It's a lot of sacrifice that we make because we see the importance of equipping you with that tool we call knowledge. And with that knowledge, you can make informed decisions about your health. And that is all we want. We want, God forbid, when you get to us at the hospital, you're not in a really bad state that we cannot do much for you. That is why we come here on Monday nights when we can. Dr. Morton came straight from the hospital. Miss Sunat is still in her scrubs. I came one straight from his home. I came, you know, from my office because we care about you. So we're going to do some wrapping up now. And if somebody wants to get a little squeeze in, we can squeeze in probably one call and the numbers are at the bottom of the screen. So while I'm going to have my panelists to wrap up, you can think about your question and you can call in. <laughs> Mr. Ibel, we want to give the floor to you so that you can have your final words for tonight mm -hmm. because I figure we're going to have you back mm -hmm. because we're getting some nice shout outs for you on, um, on WhatsApp here. So I'm going to have you give your final remarks for tonight. Thank you again for having me here, Dr. Woodley and Dr. Jensen Morton and also the wonderful job that Nalisa did at the lab. I want to thank you all. It's very important. I want to recommend to everyone out there to please think about donating. It is voluntary. And uh, let's try and save some lives. And look out for the, the, the blood drive that is going to be happening at Cradles Learning Center. We take babies, new ba newborn to five-year-old, and we're down there at Fortlands. And we're going to be having a, a drive right there at that center. So look out for us. <laughs> right. Okay, Dr. Morton. All right. Um, so good night, everyone. I'd just like to thank everyone for tuning in. And I am very much looking forward to seeing an uptick with regards to the amount of people that decide to take the plunge and become blood donors. I'm going to encourage as many people as possible to not just become a blood donor, but to become a registered blood donor. That is where you would give us permission to put you into our database of persons such that at times of need um, that we can have permission to give you just a gentle call to ask if you'd be willing to um, donate blood even if you, as long as three months has passed, um, as the needs would be. That would help to eliminate the need for the public calls um, for blood of this and this type. If we know your blood type and it matches someone that's in need, if you're a registered blood donor in our database, then we can give you a call every now and again um, as needs be. Um, the other thing is you're going to, some of you might be seeing um, some members of staff of the hospital visiting your workplaces. We've actually come up with a calendar in which we took um, the prominent businesses and also prominent groups of individuals in St. Kitts and we have scheduled two week um, periods for each of these um, businesses or ministries or groups of persons in which we would do advocacy to um, those groups in the first week and then we'll try to schedule some donations um, of the willing persons at the hospital in the next week. Um, we broke it up into 26 groups such that every two weeks of the year we are doing some other business place, some other major business place, some other major ministry, um, some other major group of persons so that we can repeat it on an annual basis. So for example if you work in um, in a particular bank and we go to you in the first two weeks of June then you can expect that every first two weeks in June that we will be making our little appeal to you from now on. It does not mean that every single year you have to give, that's one, but it also does not mean that you are limited to only giving once a year. You can give up to four times in a year as long as your health permits. So you will be seeing members of staff of JNF um, most likely um, at some time in the future making their personal appeals, but um, the general public just coming forward on their own is also very much welcome. So I'm hoping to see more of you in the future. Thank you so much, Dr. Morton, and we're going to have Ms. Suna to close off. Um, I would just like to say is that um, 
are reinforced is that donating blood, it's simple, it's safe, it's sterile. You guys out of St. Kitts National, just come on board, join the blood drive, register, become a voluntary blood donor. Uh, blood is essential to life. There is no substitute. It cannot be made. It cannot be manufactured. People like Mr. Ibel, generous blood donors, are the person that we rely on, the only source of blood for patients who need transfusion. So be that good Samaritan. Join the blood campaign. Do come out. Become a voluntary blood donor. Uh, I'm here to serve you guys, and I will remain on this blood campaign. All right. And uh, just to close off, I would just say, people live when people give. And I want to thank you for tuning in tonight. It was a pleasure spending our Tuesday night with you. And please join us again in the near future for another Health Wise. Good night and have a safe week. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm O positive. That's my blood group. And it's very important to know your blood group because in the event of an emergency, at least you know who you can um, donate blood to and also who you can receive blood from. In my case, being O positive, I can donate to anyone. Being blood positive, that's one of the positives, I'm um, being O positive.